jQuery was first released in January of 2006 and was created by John Rasick. He initially started to work on jQuery back in 2005, but jQuery was not a full library. It was just a collection of tools that he had written to make his life easier when creating websites. Those tools were for mainly two purposes. One was for working around the browser incompatibilities that existed at the time which were many. And the other one was to have better tooling and developer experience when building things for the web, because back then JavaScript was horrible to work with. John was inspired by another existing library at the time that was bundled with the Ruby on Rails framework called Prototype. He realized that there were no tools that focused on JavaScript on the browser and on making DOM manipulations easier. DOM or Document Object Model Manipulation is what makes a website interactive. When you click a button and it goes from saying login to loading, that is the DOM being manipulated by JavaScript. So John kept writing more and more tools and he finally put them all together into a library that was originally going to be called JSelect, but that ended up being called jQuery because the jSelect domain was already taken. jQuery was released while he was still on college and it actually started out as a side project. It was one of the many he was working on. None of the other side projects exist today, but that shows us the power of building side projects. They can fail or they can literally change the front-end development world like jQuery did. jQuery was initially a about two things, finding elements on a page and adding events to them. To understand how revolutionary jQuery was, we need to see how awful JavaScript was in 2006. Let's say you had a bunch of inputs in your page and you wanted to give each one of them a class of their type. So basically turning this to this. Using 2006 JavaScript, you would first have to check if the get elements by tag name function was available in the browser. And if it wasn't, you couldn't do anything. Then you would have to call all the inputs on the page. You had to do a for loop. You had to check if the inputs had a type. And if they did, you would need to add a class name using manual string concatenation. But if you used jQuery, here is all the code you would have written. Or for example, if you wanted to add an event to each button on your page, you would first wait for the window to load. We check for get elements by tag name function, get the buttons, do a for loop and add an event to each button one by one. Or you could have used jQuery and just write this. Doing DOM manipulation and event management in jQuery was so easy and painless that jQuery skyrocketed in popularity. The jQuery selector, the dollar sign and parentheses was revolutionary because it made possible the selection of elements in JavaScript using CSS selectors. jQuery's selector engine went to become a separate project called Sizzle. Actually, the selector pattern that made jQuery so famous was not even original to jQuery or even invented by John. It was three years earlier in 2003 when a developer called Simon Willison introduced get elements by selector, a function that laid the foundation of the selector pattern. Simon Willison then went to co-create the Django framework. jQuery got even more popular because it added two things that were game changers, Ajax and animations. Ajax means asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It is what we use to fetch data from a server and update parts from a page without refreshing the whole page. If Ajax did not exist, most of the interactive and real-time web apps you use today wouldn't be possible. Back then, the fetch function that you are used to did not exist. So the code looked like this. We had to use the XML HTTP request class and use open on ready state change on error and send functions to open a connection to a server, handle the response, handle the errors and start the request. jQuery simplified the process to make it look like this. But then not only JavaScript sucked, CSS was also incredibly limited compared to what it can do today. Animations and transitions were not possible. To fade in an element using JavaScript, we would have to do something like this, where we had to create an interval to slowly increase the opacity of the element from zero to one. But with jQuery, all we had to do was this. It's easy to understand why jQuery became so popular and so loved by web developers. It made web development painless for the first time. jQuery became so popular that there was a generation of developers that never learned JavaScript properly. They jumped straight to jQuery and all they knew was jQuery, not JS. Thanks to John, from day one, jQuery had an explicit plugin architecture that made the jQuery community explode. A whole industry of both paid and free jQuery plugins was created. Now people did not even have to know jQuery. They could just install a jQuery plugin, initialize it, and their website would magically have a slider. Another incredible wise decision that John made was to write the documentation for jQuery from day one. We might take for granted that all the libraries we use have documentations, but according to John, from January 2006 to January 2007, jQuery was the only JavaScript project with documentation. In 2007, jQuery UI was released. 
jQuery UI was a collection of many UI components that browsers did not support, but that were easy to build using jQuery. jQuery UI had components that we all take for granted now and that are supported by browsers, but that were a big deal before. Things like menus, accordions, date pickers, sliders, and more jQuery UI has been on maintenance mode since October 2021, and there are still more than 2 million websites using it. jQuery Mobile, released in 2010, was another project under the jQuery umbrella that made building mobile websites easy. It supported touch interfaces, theming, mobile navigation, and animations. It was deprecated in 2021. Looking at this demo of jQuery Mobile actually makes me nostalgic. I actually made good money for a teenager by convincing companies to pay me to build them a mobile website using jQuery Mobile. I remember testing the websites on a BlackBerry and feeling like a boss. jQuery itself isn't deprecated yet and it won't be anytime soon. It is the most popular library ever written. Even though John is not working on it anymore, and he has since joined Khan Academy as a chief software architect, jQuery continues to see improvements. Version 3.7 was released on August 2023. BuildWidth estimates that there are more than 82 million websites still using jQuery, and W3Tex estimates that 77% of all websites use it. That does not mean that many people are starting new projects using jQuery. In fact, frameworks like Bootstrap have removed jQuery as a dependency as a Hall. The UK government announced in 2022 that their website uk.gov was jQuery free, which is a big deal since a government website needs to work for all kinds of devices and perform well not only on M1 MacBook Pros. As a result, their website became much faster, which makes sense. We can see that the jQuery usage graph is maybe starting to drop. The reason why more and more websites can and are removing jQuery is because JavaScript and CSS have improved so, so, so much that jQuery is not needed anymore. In a website called youmightnotneedjQuery.com, we can see how by combining JavaScript and CSS, we can do most of what jQuery was famous for. And we can do it by writing similar code. To get JSON with jQuery, we would do this. And with modern JS, we would do this. Instead of using jQuery to do fade in, we can use JavaScript to replace a class name and CSS to handle the transition. Adding a class in jQuery versus JavaScript is almost the same. And adding events using add event listener, which is now supported by all major browsers, looks all right as well. So jQuery isn't dead or deprecated. It is just considered as legacy. Unless we have to work on a legacy project, there seems to be little reason to learn it or start a new project with it, knowing that most of the things that people use jQuery for can be easily done using simple, fast-running JavaScript and CSS. As an industry, we owe tons to jQuery, to John and to all the contributors that made building things for the web fun. The web is better because of jQuery. We should be thankful to John for creating it as a side project in 2005. And we should also be thankful for the fact that we don't need it anymore today. I hope you liked the video and you found it useful. If you did, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. As I said before, JavaScript is now awesome and easier than ever to learn. If you want to learn it for free, join our free JavaScript for beginners course, where we spend eight hours learning JavaScript together and where we build things like clocks, to-do lists, weather apps with geolocation and more. It's absolutely free. If you already know JavaScript, still click the link below to enroll in any of our free Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, and Next.js courses. We have courses for all levels, from beginners to advanced, all free. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onjana, kamsa hago, sanam hamida. See you on the next one. Dame bayo. Bye-bye.